there you are. I'm switching back to vertical mode here. So it's got this adapter here. And that's got to go. Pretty snug fit. Got these little cams that lock that into the machine surface. Spindle bore. And I'll go get the spline driver. Fifty taper. Now I had to remove one of the drive ears so the machine would accept cap taper. And I've got kind of a counterweight in there because uh, the machine will vibrate. I added a little hand wheel to the back of the draw bar. It makes it very handy to have that. Now, in a convenient holder here called the claw, it's an inch and a half Williams wrench. And you put the brake on them and snug that in there. neutral. At this point, anyway. Right there. So I gotta stab that spawn. Into the counterpart in the head there. So this will drive the gears in that pit. So you can run the head from about that far out, clear up, so to get the most uh, rigid setup, of course, you'd want this up close to the uh, machine. Pretty cool. It's got a candle lock here. More room. And down it goes. 
I hope you're all doing good this morning. It's pretty cool, but it's going to get hot. Okay, that's kind of all the way. I think that would be fine. There's not very much clearance. So, break these loose and leave that one tight. I'll have to show all the angles this head will go in. I'll just set that right. Oh, triple the box. Just like that. Okay. <sighs> loose, loose, tight, loose. Okay, here it comes. It's not that bad. You know, I've got a nice mark here. Right about there. Looks good right there. Then I'll uh, ease it in with a square, then an indicator if I feel I need to. I think about as tight as you can get these with a short wrench is good because it's not going anywhere. Uh, I've seen this where they're over tight and then it damages the castings. Okay. So we're good. Back to vertical. Okay, I got something over here. I'll be back. All right, I'll get into a little detail on just how I use the cutter grinder to do the stuff that I want to do, not what somebody else wants me to do, but what. I do. <laughs> so that's settled. Okay, it's set up for horizontal cutters right now. But I changed to uh, vertical over here. There's that cup of coffee. I have a cup of coffee here. You know, there's smoke in the air. And it, it kind of gives you a sore throat. I think it's... Uh, the... I don't know, the more brushy prairie weeds or whatever that is, uh, is what I'm smelling more than uh, pine trees. Anyway, there's wildfires everywhere. The whole place is burning. <laughs> okay. Now, these old guys, I, I, I learned this uh, from a guy uh, about putting your tool post grinder on on this old these older machines because these older machines don't have the tilt head and they're just a chunk you know this is a big cast iron column it's got a lock on it and you can hang something like this off that that's that's a hundred pounds anyway right there that grinder and the motor and the mount that mount's two inch thick steel well anyway I can snap this arbor out now that we're in vertical mode and uh, just leave this in place and uh, get this arbor out of the way. I can move the thing, 
finger out of the way it's already adjusted to be very easy to replace then I can um, like put in this uh, uh, universal type grinding fixture this one's the old tool right at the X5C fixture and I can put biases, V blocks all kinds of things in there set it up here right in the middle then I'll use this, I'll be using carbide here on grind at high speed and I'll just leave that like it is and uh, I'll put this uh, diamond wheel on here and then I got a straight diamond wheel to put on the back side there for uh, that <laughs> how I'm hand doing radiuses so that's versatility in my opinion for me because now see I'm going to go over there and I'm going to attempt to get a close tolerance on a very pretty hard piece of steel there on this old uh, 81 year old Axelson engine right? but well, I'll tell you what it's heavy so I will be doing that and uh, hey let's go outside and uh, uh, take a look at this drill press real quick and I'll load this video then I'll come back in and uh, do some machine work and video of that. Okay, let's head out there. <sighs> okay, I got this uh, rag here. And I put a little bit of kerosene on it. That's not enough. Dripping all over the place. Then I just take and ripe this machine all the way down. And the sun's going to get hot today in the near 100, in the upper 90s. So I'm going to wipe all this down here with this kerosene. And the sun helps lift the rust out of this. And I put pictures of this, uh, just how rusted this was. And you can see this column, a little bit of dirt on this right now, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's really starting to look pretty nice. Now I'm gonna move this thing um, up to the building there as soon as it cools down. And that'll be nice. I can uh, shelter it there, get a roof over it. Yeah. At <laughs> these marks here, you can see where the head was. And I'll tell you what, this thing was frozen. Do not ever get a junkyard radial drill unless you <laughs> want to devote some time to it. But this one uh, is in just very good condition. You can see the scraping still on here. It's just gotten to where space to store something like this is... Uh, not profitable the way people look at it this way the stuff ends up in the junkyard and what they will put in covered space is old cars not old machine tools and i'll tell you what there's a lot less old machine tools than there are old cars i'm not knocking the old car guys i've got i uh, got a 49 chev truck here and an 89 chef truck. Of course, my wife drives a new car. That's what wives are supposed to do. They don't need this trouble. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that thing runs. I, uh, I haven't driven it in quite a while because, um, I need exercise, so I ride a bicycle. And uh, if I didn't do that, 
I might not be alive. And that's, that's a fact. Doesn't that look nice? I, it preserved the, um, the patina. I preserved the um, planar marks. Just very nice here. Very, very nice. I, I think I mentioned before I trammed this thing and it's uh, within a thousandth of an inch on the table. And <laughs> no kidding, on this table, it's had all these weld repairs here. They did that at the community college here. I was able to kind of track this thing down a little bit. And um, they resurfaced this table by fly cutting it, moving the head on here and swinging it back and forth like that. Hey Chloe, knock it off. I'm gonna probably have to go put a cap on her. She, she chased a mouse in the house this morning so she's running around the house and I'm hoping <laughs> the, the mouse ran out. Okay. Yeah, let's have a look from back here. Yeah, that, uh, that rust is fading out. Yeah, it's going to be real, real nice. I'm taking advantage of the hot sun on it because uh, it really uh, helps penetrate that rust. And at this point, I'm not scraping, you know, just skimming the rust off the surface. The uh, kerosene treatment will uh, uh, really get that stuff out. And it had a rough winter. I did everything I could to keep this thing on. Um, buttoned up good, but it, the storms are so severe. I, I went through a whole bunch of tarps, strong winds and stuff. No more of that. I'm not going to do that again. I'm staying away from the junkyard. I'm not going to pick up any more stuff like this. Okay, I'm going to load this video and you guys have a good morning. <laughs>